It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood, a beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? Would you be mine? It's a neighbor. Generations of children, including this one, started their day hearing Fred Rogers sing that song at the start of every episode of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. The groundbreaking series spoke directly to kids about some of life's weightiest issues in a simple and direct fashion. The new documentary, Won't You Be My Neighbor, looks at the legacy of Fred Rogers and his Emmy Award-winning program. It opened this week. Here's a peek. He had a director that once said to me, you take all of the elements that make good television and do the exact opposite. You have Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Low production values, simple set, unlikely star. Yet, it worked. Because he was saying something really important. Love is at the root of everything. Learning, all parenting, all relationships, love or the lack of it. Academy Award winning filmmaker Morgan Neville directed the documentary and is with us now. Good morning. Good morning. This Good morning. was wonderful. And Vlad said he watched, I watched. What made you want to do this film though? Well, I was a child once. I watched the show and I loved the show as a child. And then I didn't think about him for a long time. Mm. But then as a parent myself and rediscovering him, I, I sensed there was a lot more to him than I ever realized. And as I made the film, I realized there was so much more than I realized. What was the biggest thing that you realized about him that you didn't know? He was doing something profound, something deep. He was helping kids process life and figure out how to deal with the trauma of being a person in our culture. He really was doing something that worked on multiple levels at the same time. It was simple, but not superficial. It was very simple, but very deep. You know, I watch a lot of those children's shows, yeah. Sesame Street and Romper Room and uh, The Electric Company, yeah. but there was something unique about Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood that those shows did not have, as amazing as they were. Well, he was a Presbyterian minister, first of all, so he never mentioned God, but there was an element of ministry to what he was doing. He was basically telling kids, this is how you should treat each other, and this is how you should treat yourselves. I mean, the idea of a neighborhood is kind of our society. How are we going to live together? So these fundamental messages of morality and kindness, you know, I, I like to think of his message essentially as radical kindness. Right. But the, but the issues on Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood were weightier than you might find on a Sesame Street, which was all about counting and, you know, words and numbers. Yeah, I think about Sesame Street as a place you would go to learn about numbers or counting, and you'd have Schoolhouse Rock would teach you about <laughs> civics and things. We're going to start singing. Yeah, we're going to start singing exactly. at any moment. Which are great, but what Mr. Rogers was doing was teaching about being a person. It's almost a moral show in that way. So he was looking at these profound issues of death and yes. war and divorce. And this is a show for two to six-year-olds, essentially. Yeah, I don't think, at the time, we clearly didn't realize. Yeah, we it did was, not. It was when yeah. you watch the documentary and see so many yes. of those things. It also surprised me how involved he was in the production, how lighthearted he was. I, I maybe didn't necessarily expect that in him. It's, it's interesting, because on the one hand, he wrote every episode, he wrote every song, he did the, voice, the voices of all the puppets. Right. I mean, he was deeply involved in the show, and he was kind of a perfectionist about it, and a little bit of a, you know, a struggling artist yeah. trying to figure it out. But at the same time, he had this incredible sense of humor. He was so funny, and that was a big revelation to me. The revelation to me was, as a kid, I loved the land of make-believe. And I didn't realize that he was the principal puppeteer for all of those puppets until I realized he was never there, there with when the puppets were there. Friday. So um, that was a big revelation for me. But the other one I want to know is what was he like in real life? Was he the same? I mean, nobody is, but did he bring some of those well, attributes? That's the thing. It's the fundamental question that everybody wants to know. Is he for real? Yeah. Was, the kids would write in and say, are you for real? You know. I think the answer is yes. I mean, he is oddly almost exactly who Mr. Rogers, the character, is. You know, and in fact, I think in real life he was a more impressive person even than the character. You know, more so. willful, more intellectual, more um, just human. But he was Mr. Rogers. There was nothing I found out about him that was shocking, but it was all surprising. He, d yeah. he died only a couple years after doing the show. Did he realize at the time of his death, from what you could find out, the impact that he had 
on generations well, of children. I mean, at one point, he was getting as much mail as anybody in America, and he responded to every letter. So he received over a million pieces of mail <laughs> over his career. So there's no way he couldn't have known, but I don't think he ever felt secure that he had done, done a good job and, you know, it was time to retire. He always felt there was more he could do. Goes back to childhood. If you watch the documentary, you see all of yeah, that. Yeah, indeed. I, I want to ask you just one last question yeah. about uh, the man who played Officer Clemens, sure. uh, Francois Clemens. He was gay. Uh, what did Fred Rogers think about that? Fred was supportive of gay rights, but he didn't want Francois to be openly gay on a children's TV show in the late 1960s. And it was something he struggled with, and I think it was difficult. He came around on it, but it took a long time. But it showed that he himself was human, that he made mistakes, and I think he'd admit that. Such a fascinating documentary. Great documentary. Your work is always incredible, and it's so great to be able to talk to you when you ever you have these pieces. Thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having me. Morgan Neville, so great. Won't You Be My Neighbor is currently playing in theaters around the nation.